Podcast by Friday, episode 49. My whole purpose when I went there was to meet people because I'm uh, an introvert by nature. And I was trying to step outside my comfort zone. The whole thing is I'm thinking on the plane over is, you know, go meet people and, and speak to people. And one of those people, fortunately, was you. Podcast by Friday with Bill Griggs and Kingsley Grant. We help people to create their minimal viable podcast by taking bold action to defeat procrastination and to get their voices heard. I'm Kingsley Grant. And I'm Bill Griggs. And you're listening to Podcast by Friday. Hello, everyone. I'm Bill Griggs, and I'm here with my main man, Kingsley Grant. How's it going today, Kingsley? Bill, I'm telling you, if it was going any better, I don't know what I would do with myself. It is incredibly awesome, man. I, every day I get up and I'm upright. You know what? It's going to be an awesome day. All right. That is the uh, general feeling and uh Emotion that we love to promote here at Podcast by Friday, a show that teaches you how to launch your podcast in under seven days. And uh, we've we've been having a, a blast uh, going through some things that are peripherally, peripherally, what a <laughs> nice word that is, related to getting your podcast out there. We've been discussing um, how you meet people, how you network with others and uh you know in the past we've done some really uh uh interesting conversation about where you can meet people and how you can network with them and today we're going to talk about a really um cool topic with how you can meet and interact with influencers to help grow your podcast you know and it's a very incredible or interesting topic bill because i think this is really a very um pivotal part of the journey of a podcaster or any person that is beginning to do business of any kind because influencers are so key i believe to a lot of our success and i've seen it in so many ways and experienced that myself and i'm sure you have as well in the space you have mm -hmm. been for some time. Yep. It, it, it's um, a, a truly amazing thing that happens when uh, you actually meet and begin interacting with an influencer in your niche, in your subject, um, because it, it, it's like throwing fuel on a fire. <laughs> the, the effect it has of increasing just how uh, everything is going because, uh, you know, the relationships that you can develop with influencers. It's almost like a combustion mm -hmm. chamber. Boom, you know, they'll start mm -hmm. blowing up. You know, and, and it's, as you were talking, Bill, it's interesting as well how you can be seen by others as an influencer and don't even realize that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, that's one of the... Uh, cool things about it you know when you're putting out content like you do with your podcast and you um are you know talking and talking about a particular subject in a particular way you know your topic getting your voice heard people recognize that people then begin associating you with having expert status in that yeah. uh in that topic and, you know, you begin to influence their decisions when they're thinking about doing something in that topic. And, and I think, I mean, you know, because I, you, that key word you just used, the idea of um, become an expert or uh, be expert positioned, because I think what happened is you're able to sway and able to influence people in their in their thinking, in their behavior and just the overall um, functioning, and that's why I think it's so good for us even to look at the definition according to Merriam-Webster of the word de of influence. And I like what that definition that is given, which says is the act or power of producing an effect without apparent exertion of force or direct exercise of command. 
And I also like the other part that says is a power or capacity of causing an effect in indirect or intangible ways. I like that better. To me, that captures for me what I how I picture an influencer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, it, it's funny. Uh, many people would have difficulty defining what influences are, but we all recognize what influence yeah. is. And, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things that you can't say directly how it affected you, but it did. Um, you know, I, I think, um, I, I think back uh, to, you know, some of the people that have influenced me over the years and, you know, some of the, um, instances where I did things that, were probably um, not what I would have normally done under the circumstance based on, um, you know, the influence of, of people like um, paying off a large sum of debt through um, the influence that Dave Ramsey had on me, um, you know, listening to his podcast by accident one day on, on a, it was actually a radio show on the way home from work and just catching the tail end of it and then finding out, you know, what this guy was saying about, paying your smallest bill first and then, you know, taking the money that you save from that and re, you know, uh, applying it to your next bill on up the line until pretty soon you've, you've got a bunch of quick wins. Uh, you know, that's influence. Most people think differently about their finances and this was one of those cases. So, you know, the, the ideas that you can get off of an influence or the, the, the mindsets, that's a real cool thing. You know, it, it is, which, uh, it reminds me of this story of, in the story of this um, lady. I, I call her young because she's about um, at the time of her, her death, about my age. Um, but in 2016, Bill, in, in Jamaica, which, of course, is my homeland, mm -hmm. there was this doctor, you know, her name was Dr. Suzanne Roy, Susanna Roy. And what happened was that was – you remember that H1N1 virus, the swine flu that was mm -hmm. going around? Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. And, and so many people were dying. And she in Jamaica, being a doctor, she was treating so many people with that disease or the, you know, the virus. And she, in turn, contracted that virus. And she was one of those ladies, you know, one of those doctors that is really a doctor at heart. Hmm. I mean, she had incredible influence in her community and actually across the this a section of Jamaica that is really, you know, a well-known, I, you know, she was a, a well-known of the well-known, so to speak. And when she, she succumbed to the, the, the virus, she died. But at her funeral, I, I was invited to be again, a speaker at the funeral. And I was thinking how interesting that people saw me in that light where they thought, Hey, you know what? It'd be great if you could come and be a part of that event. But when I went, I saw how much of an influence or influencer she was. And I don't know if she realized that because sometimes you don't even realize how much of an influencer you are until after the fact or people bring it mm -hmm. to your attention. At her funeral, it's about 1,500 people. I mean, it, it packed out this, this gymnasium. They could not find a place to hold the amount of people that were there. And not everyone who came to the, the funeral service there was a whole bunch of other people at the gravesite waiting for her body to, to arrive there. So you put all that together, you know, it's almost 2,000 people, I would just say, showed up to her funeral, which mm -hmm. tells you how influential she, influential she was. And I don't know if she had realized that much when she was alive. But also the fact that uh, to be invited to speak at that event, in my mind, raised the idea, wait a minute, you know, how people see you sometimes and you don't realize that. So... We might not recognize, and as you're listening today, you might not re recognize how much of an influence you have on other people. And so you might be an influence yourself, but we're talking about people who we know are directly. We can see the influence you're having, especially in the podcast world, or the online world, or the space you're in. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how, how to leverage that, how to use that to your advantage and to really basically expand your reach. Um, in your podcast and journey. Wow, that is, that is so. Wow, um, I'm, I'm at a loss for words to think that someone would give their um, 
their life trying to save others and you know how tragic that must have been um you know one of the things that that uh that is um probably on the minds of our listeners is you know why uh would we uh want to use the, the power of influence um to help grow our audience and you know i think that uh, you you try and gain a, a level of influence through associations. As, as we said, you've become associated with uh, this uh, doctor, um, you know, and through other means and through, you know, your great work uh, in the ministry and, and everything. So, you know, that, that was one way that you, you could gain a level of influence was through the associations you have. Um, mm-hmm. What's, what's another way? You know, another way I, I believe is you create momentum in your life doing something that begin to to build and and it I believe that in itself attracts you know <clears throat> um, when whenever you are on a roll you know and and people are seeing things happening and watching you I've seen so many people or have had people reach out to me through the back door so to speak and say Kingsley man I've seen some things that you're putting out there and doing and really it's and again it's perception sometimes it's perception right because mm-hmm. perception is a reality and they would say hey you know it's like you're having some moment, momentum going you know and i feel like i'm on a roll on something and that in itself began to attract people and somehow i believe that's one of the ways why we might ourselves being seen as an influencer or may see other people as an influencer because of the momentum that they are um, get gaining in the work that they're doing. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, when you when you think about it, when you get together with um, you know someone uh, of influence on your topic, uh, it starts a change, uh, uh, a transformation in you know you in the way that you do things, in your mindset, in your uh, uh, modus operandi, the way you're doing everything, and it, and it's because of that association um, of uh, ha- you know having. Uh, a relationship forming with that influencer can change the way you do things. Like I'm about to change the way that I um, set up my web pages because of, uh, you know, now I can't claim direct association, but because of, of the influence that um, Russell Brunson has uh, um, had over me through his books and through his podcast. So, you know, you just never know what change in, in transformations where it can lead you. And, you know, that really, I think, Bill, because you're going through that change yourself, that will bring results your way that you may not have foreseen. You know, you may not have even realized initially that while you're doing this, you know, you, it's because you realize there's a need. You see how it could work for you. But many times the reason why I believe we look at the idea of an influencer or being an influencer ourselves it, it, because of the results that come that come from that, you know, that relationship, that association. Because I can get results today, or I do get results today in some areas of my life, simply because I've, I'm associated with people that others see as a as an influencer. So mm-hmm. it does work as a win win, I believe, for both the person that is a, the influencer, but also for the person who is. Um, associated with that influencer. Yeah, it can have a real impact on um, everything that you um, are, are doing in the, um, you know, on your cause, your purpose uh, to be associated with persons of influence or to become one yourself. Tremendous impact. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, 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 I don't kind of jump in on that for a second sure. here. I can think about, um, you know, I, I, for example, podcast movement, right? With the founder, one of the co-founders is Jared Easley. Mm. Now, I know I've known Jared for many, many years. I mean, before even podcast movement began, we hung out together. We would have coffee. We would, you know, brainstorm ideas. We would brainstorm our dreams. I mean, we were. That was when before even the podcast movement was actually birth. And we look now at how the impact that podcast movement has is having worldwide really mm-hmm. and because i have that relationship with with jared you know even though 
that's as far as it goes because I, I, I <laughs> sometimes you just don't know what you don't know, right? Because I remember when he was first thinking about this and they were putting the idea together, I was there at the ground floor, you know, mm-hmm. kind of having this conversation, but never thought, I, you know, that wasn't really my thing. I didn't see myself as, you know, but I, I know if I had pushed or, or, or put my idea, my, um, my input and say, hey, man, you know what? I'm, I want to go in on this. I, I knew it would have been, been a, would have been a very well received um, suggestion because mm-hmm. of, of our relationship. But look at the impact that's have been that podcast movement is having today. Look at the impact that it has been. You and I really kind of met a podcast movement. Yeah, we did, and uh, we wouldn't uh, be doing this podcast uh, had we not met at podcast movement. Uh, you know, it was. Uh, we both went there because we had podcasts of our own that we were trying to develop. And, yep. uh, you know, my whole purpose when I went there was to meet people because I'm uh, an introvert by nature. And I was trying to step outside my comfort zone. The whole thing is I'm thinking on the plane over is, you know, go meet people and, and speak to people. And one of those people, fortunately, was you. <laughs> uh, a person who I consider to have influence uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, look at the results, uh, you know, the impact that this has had. We've created Podcast by Friday and we're helping other people to get this podcast bug. This is a, gr- I mean, you know, that's a great, great example, right? A case in point. I think that was really a great way to segue into, you know, how, how does the power of influencers grow our audience? You've just kind of found you know, hinted at that right now because the connection that we've made in my podcast movement. So I believe that when we're able to connect with someone who in our eyes is an influencer, and like you just mentioned just now, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I think also, which is so cool, is I remember a podcast movement, uh, maybe 2015, 14 thereabouts. Um, I remember this guy that I met there and we were talking and immediately he said to me, oh, Kingsley, we could do a joint venture. And he began to share about what it was that he was doing and was saying, hey, do you think this may fit your your audience? So the very fact that he brought that up is the opportunity that came about that a joint venture could be formed with a person who I consider to be an influencer. As a matter of fact, he is an incredible influencer today in the podcast space. And, um, you know, so... That would not have come about because if I didn't connect with him and I seen him as an influencer and he really kind of saw me as somebody that he thought mm-hmm. would be a great fit. So a joint venture, it's a great way to form a relationship and with an influencer that we will talk a little bit more about in a few minutes. Sure. You know, um, doing a joint venture is a, is a really cool way to, to get going. But there's, you know, other ways that you... Um, can become associated with um, people of influence. And uh, one that uh, happened to me recently that was was kind of um, uh, unexpected was um, when I was asked to speak at a maker fair, a mini maker fair here in Rochester, New York. Mm. And, um, you know, because of my efforts in the CNC community and the making uh, stuff, I was asked to um, to do that. And as a result of that, I got to meet four or five other influencers who also have YouTube channels. Uh, you know, for those who, of you who did not know, I sometimes make uh, videos about how to do things. Uh, and there was one fellow on, on this panel, uh, Jimmy Duresta. And mm. I got to tell you, uh, I had been admiring Jimmy's work for a while. Jimmy had a, uh, a TV show for a, a while where he was, uh, it's kind of a reality show where, they would send him out uh, uh, and get him junk, uh, basically. And he would take that junk and he would turn it into something amazing mm. and then, you know, uh, market that to somebody. And it was, uh, you know, uh, making uh, uh, guitars and axes and, you know, just everything. It's all over the thing. And I got to meet Jimmy DeResta as a mm. result of sharing a stage with him. And wow. uh, from that, we formed... That's big time, man. <laughs> yeah, it, I think so. <laughs> uh, you know, we we formed a, um, a, uh, a friendship over there. I've, I've met Jimmy a couple of times now since then, and uh, we've never had the opportunity to work together, like, you know, a joint venture or anything like that. 
but I would love to do that. And, uh, you know, now that possibility is an, is an open thing. Um, if I saw something that my audience would like to see that his audience would also like to see, it would benefit both of us. So uh, you just never know where these things go. Um, shout out to Jimmy Duresta. <laughs> You, you never, you never, never know. You know, I, I think, for example, you know, sharing content. You mentioned Jim and Duress just now, for example, and you could share content of his to your audience, right? He can do the very same thing. But I find sometimes when it's sharing the content of someone who is an influencer, and you're tagging them if needs be at times because you want to give them a shout out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you could write an article. You could have a like you you just did just now in a sense. You shared on this podcast about Jim and Duress, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a content you shared about him. Who knows who might say, hey, man, I heard Bill talking about you and become curious. Mm -hmm. and, and immediately that mutual um, benefit begin to take place because he may say, oh, wait a minute, Bill. I, who knows what that may, may go from there? But I've found I've shared people's content in the past of um, an upcoming event. I remember – you know, Michael Stelsner, who is an, mm -hmm. an, an influencer. You I know? love his podcast. Yeah. Right. It's like a big, big time. And I shared some content before, way back when, and about him, about social media world and all the events he were doing and stuff like that. And it, it came across his, his eyes or, or somehow he got back to him. And long story short, I eventually was able to interview him on my podcast because, you know, again, mutual uh, relationship was formed and I didn't share the content with that in mind i thought like you just said it was a good content my audience would appreciate it so i was doing it as a service curating that information for my audience mm -hmm. and boom guess what happened next thing i know michael stessner was a guest on my show i can say i interviewed michael stessner again going back to another person you know you mentioned about um you know um from the final State peace university um dave ramsey mm-hmm you know, the guy who hosts Entre, Entre Leadership or Entre yeah, Leadership, yeah, right? That's it. Yep. Um, I forget his name. But anyway, um, I, I did the very same thing. I was able to, to um, interview him on my podcast. Mm -hmm. So, again, you never know if you, what, whose content you might share. Just because you want to give value to your audience, you never know where it might end up, whose desk, whose ear, who I it may cross mm -hmm. that may – reach out and return a favor to you. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't mean to, um, uh, to, uh, you know, beat it at horse, but, uh, I was fortunate and, uh, very, um, very glad to have Chris Gillibo on my, uh, show, um, discussing his new book side hustle. And, you know, I've been reading Chris Gillibo's work for years. In fact, um, he had, he has a book, called the um, $100 Startup that I highly recommend for people who want to get started in business. In fact, I've been giving that as graduation gifts to people with a, you know, uh, the money to get them started and inside mm -hmm. of that um, to give them a, uh, a reason to go. But persistence helped me to get Chris on the show. You know, when I asked the first time, it, you know, it didn't fit his schedule. When I asked the second time, it also didn't fit his schedule, but the third time it did. So you got to be persistent, uh, you know, and not just a, you know, a drive by uh, a friend, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, Chris came on the show and had a great time. And I, I know that if I were to um, reach out again in the future, that he would probably, if he is scheduled allowed, come back on the show. And, you know, New York Times best selling author, Chris Gillibo. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I love I think this this quote by Zig Ziglar is just so fitting right here where Zig Ziglar, the late Zig Ziglar said this. You can have everything in life you want if you will just help other people get what they want. And I think that's what it is we're kind of talking about here just now. You know, we mentioned just uh, the idea of these names you mentioned, Zig, um, Chris Gillibo, you know, um, Jimmy Duras. I mentioned Michael Selzner. We're referencing them in this show as we speak. And that's another way, I believe, to come across the, the radar of those influencers. And again, we're doing it because we think it's a value and these are great people who have great things to offer. 
So we're not doing it for some, um, you know, kind of a, a selfish reason. Mm -hmm. We are just doing it because we think it's really worthwhile you're hearing about this. So when you reference people in your show or in your articles or in social media, it's another way that you can connect with these influencers and then that relationship can be used to help to to grow your audience. So I think it leads us then to – okay, I, I do have yeah. something to say. Yeah, I, I – you know, I just want to make sure that you know that we're going to put links to each of the people that we've mentioned in this episode inside the show notes uh, for this episode. And you can get that at uh, podcastbyfriday.com slash four nine, the number four and nine. That's where you will see the information about this. And maybe you'll check out one of these influencers that we've mentioned. Um, let them know you came from us. Yeah, I, was, I was just about to say that. <laughs> make sure you tell them where they can go and find out what we mentioned about them and talked about them in this show. You know, someone might be listening, Bill, and we wondering, okay, Kingsley, you and Bill have been doing this for some time. So, you know, you know people and you have that kind of mileage under your belt, so to speak. We're just getting started. Mm -hmm. And, well, what would you say to that person, Bill, who is saying, oh, man, you know, I just don't know anybody yet and I'm just getting started. Should I wait until I've had 500 episodes in or... A mm -mm. hundred? No, 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 no. That's called procrastination. No, no. You should start as soon as you can. The minute you start um, getting your message out there, you should be uh, considering who would be um, a good fit for you. Who is it that has a message that your audience wants to hear, needs to hear, and begin the process of making that relationship with them. Um, and one thing I would suggest up, up front, and this is taking on a slight segue, uh, you will, you know, and this comes back to the point that uh, Kingsley just made about uh, Zig Ziglar, but you will become more useful to that influencer if you help them achieve some goal that they're already working on. And yeah. they will be more useful to you. This is the section of our show where we would normally pause for a word from our sponsor. Now, if you would like to be the sponsor of the Podcast by Friday show, and you have a product or service that you feel would be of benefit to new entrepreneurs starting their new podcast, then contact us at podcast at podcastbyfriday.com, and we'll see if you'd be a good fit. You will become more useful to that influencer if you help them achieve some goal that they're already working on. And they will be more useful to you. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that fits into where you just said, Bill, as soon as you can. What if right now you begin to um, help that, that influencer you have in mind mm -hmm. achieve what they want? What if you begin to reference them? What if you begin to, to link back to something that they've quoted or, or written or said or a video they have? Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't really – you don't have to wait. And I think – Another place you can um, leverage these relationships, we mentioned earlier, podcast movement, like an event like that. You know, introduce yourself. I know sometimes, yes, you might be an introvert and, you know, I, and I get it. But I think that just to make an intentional um, effort, hey, you know what? When I go to my next event or podcast movement, I'm going to do one thing, mm -hmm. connect with these people, meet this one person. If that's all you did – you know what? You did a great thing and you have a great start. So at events, look for people who are going to go there. Hey, here, here is a, um, I would say, a ninja kind of um, move that you can make. I went to an event and Dan Miller was speaking at an event, right? And Dan Miller from 48 Days, great influencer, you know, incredible guy. And I wanted to spend some time to meet with Dan Miller. Dan Miller, to get here for an hour of coaching, you're talking about a five-figure kind mm -hmm. of coaching guy, right? So I remember hearing on his podcast maybe a few years back this ninja tip. He said, look for people who are going to be speakers or influencers at an event who are going to be there. So sometimes you, they'll mention certain names of people who are speakers or going to be on a panel or they are attending and that event host is using that person's name as one way to attract, you know, people to attend the event. And Dan Miller had said, 
what if you reach out weeks ahead to that person through their their you know someone who maybe I'm their admin or anybody who can get to them and say hey I realize you're going to be at this event would it be okay if we have lunch because they're going to have lunch at some point so I reached out to Dan Miller through his his uh you know his office and I said I noticed you're going to be at this event as a speaker and I remember you saying that one of the best ways is to try to reach out ahead of time and see if you can have lunch or coffee or something with that person while they're there. And guess what? Dan Miller said, I got back a note from him, yes, we can have lunch together. So Fantastic. at the event, Bill, so at the event, everyone after he spoke is crowding around him. And here I heard people saying, Hey Dan, what did you what are you doing for lunch? Um, can we go to lunch with you, right? And Dan said, and I was standing right there. He said, no, no, I have lunch with King. Kings and I have lunch together. And so we're going to go to lunch. But I felt like on cloud nine at that <laughs> moment, you know, and we went to lunch for an hour and I had him to myself. Mm-hmm. Or, and he chose to go to Chick-fil-A. So I couldn't beat that, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever he wanted, I would have paid for. But he chose Chick-fil-A. We had a great Chick-fil-A. And on the napkin, I got some great, great idea that I implemented and really helped my business. That's fantastic. Wow. Uh, I, I got to meet Dan Miller at, uh, at uh, Podcast Movement uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a great guy. Um, yeah. What a great speaker. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we've, 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 we've gone through some ways that you can uh, begin to leverage your, your relationships and uh, with, with these influencers. But one thing uh, that we sometimes forget is uh, upon invitation. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes the influencer will invite you into their circle. It's rare. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it it is rare. I mean, you've really got to be, you know, cranking some stuff out and, you know, making uh, a mark in your community. But boy, when that happens, I got to tell you, that is a, a, a fantastic time. Um, you know, there, that, if you are invited to meet with an influencer, I suggest you take that invitation very seriously. Yeah. And you know, I find Bill, sometimes that invitation may come in a form of a paid event. For example, I remember that I went to an event and they had, it was, um, Brendan Burchard and Bre- Brendan Burchard had lunch and he said, for those who want to have lunch along with Brendan Burchard, if you paid, I think, I forgot how much it was extra to your ticket, you could have lunch with Brendan Burchard, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes the invitation may cost you, but listen, it's an investment in yourself and in that relationship because imagine you're sitting at a table, your name is being called, that person hears your name, they connect, they connect a story, you tell a, a story, you are top of mind. So you have just now established yourself in that setting as somebody who is um, who matters, who to them is not just a name anymore. They have a face. So sometimes the invitation may come through, you know, um, you paying for a, an event where they are going to be a closed door for a small number of people. Mm-hmm. I believe if it's worth it to you, go for it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the invitation may come from a friend of the influencer yep. who who knows you and knows that you and the influencer would be a, a great fit. Great and point. That's really, you know, uh, fantastic. That's, that's happened to me. Um, uh, that's how I met uh, Rush John, uh, Joel Boggess, and, uh, yep. and uh, Marion LaSalle. Someone at a podcast um, event invited me to an event they were all going to go and attend later that day because they thought I would be a good fit. Perfect. Yeah, I, you know, I think the, and and some, I believe if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't um, didn't I introduce you to Dan Miller? Yes, you did. Right. So here is a great point here because we were there, we were friends, we were just um, you know connecting and stuff that day, and you and I are are there, and Dan, I said, hey, Dan, this is Bill. So that's a good point you were making. Sometimes. It may come to someone, and you may also say to that person, "Hey, you know what? I know that you know this person. 
if we are at an event, would you mind introducing me? You could ask, but don't impose. Listen, here's what, what I want to mention, Bill. I think this, this is so of bad taste. I know this guy is an influencer right now in the space of consulting. And he posted something recently on his Facebook page where he said somebody name dropped him to do some work that had that person had not connected or reached out to him or, you know, give him some heads up on this. The company the person reached out to <clears throat> said, hey, you know, so and so had um, dropped your name that they knew you and you were aware of this whole thing. So I, I have no idea. So not only did this person got turned down, but they're like blacklisted now mm. and hurt a relationship with this influencer guy because they name dropped and just did it in a very, you know, to me, a very, um, how should I put it, a, a way that I think is distasteful. Dis- mm-hmm. So be careful that you just don't, you know, abuse that relationship and some assume you can just throw the name around and say, hey, you know. Man, Kingsley said that you know I could reach out to you when you're lying. No, no, no. Let me, <laughs> you know, ask me and let me know ahead of time. And or you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm an influencer in your eyes as you're listening, but the point is, don't just assume and impose yourself upon situation because I think it could hurt your cause in the long run. Oh, certainly. You know, um, just because you are familiar to someone uh, does not me- give you permission to. Um, make uh, promises for them or, uh, you know, do anything. So, I mean, you have to treat everyone with the same respect and the same um, level of courtesy that you would want for yourself. And that's always a good way to do business. You know, Bill, I, I know you're an influencer in your group. You have a, a Facebook group of almost like 13,000 thereabouts people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what I've seen you um, manage that sometimes when people have tried to use you because you're this influencer to them and you know just to me abuse sometimes that relationship but i like the way you handle it very humble but very nicely and firmly say hey listen you know what um you have to you kind of steer them in a different way i mean you're nicer than i am i would be but um you're a nice guy <laughs> but <laughs> i mean but you handle Thank it very you. diplomatically but the point is that you're just saying hey there's a, there's a better way to go about doing this Learn how to learn how to do it in a better way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I try. You know, it, it's it's like anything. There's only so much time in the day. There are only so many things that I'm focused on. And if if I have these issues, I know the much larger influencers have these same issues. So you know, you have to be cognizant, and you have to think about what it is that uh, you know somebody you know, might have on their plate already before you, you know, try and, uh, you know, name drop or, or, Mm -hmm. you know, promise something. Uh, I've turned down a lot of, um, products, uh, you know, Hey, take this product and use it or, you know, talk about it that, you know, just don't fit what I'm doing or, uh, you know, I, I simply don't have time for, um, that's a nice position to be in, but it, it's, it's, it's the reality of the things. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you've got to be very conscious of your reputation, of your time, of your, your name and what it is that your primary mission is. Um, mm. so, you know, it's, I'm sure you have the same, same issues, Kingsley. Yep. Yes. I, you know, it, it is. And I think that's really, I believe we have in a sense given this, you as a listener, We've given you this last caution, but you have gotten so much information, I believe, in this episode about, you know, why uh, the the power of influencers to grow your audience. We talk about how to do that, when to do that. And I like the kind of rap you just gave just now, Bill, about, you know, the idea of an invitation. Mm-hmm. So we want you to really put this episode, this show today that you've heard into action. So we are going to ask you or basically just um, strongly encourage you to choose an influencer that you want to build a relationship with and begin to bring value to their cause, right? Mm-hmm. Value. And, and it's not going to happen overnight. Just just give, give, give and see what happens. Yep. Maybe you leave a comment in their, uh, in their video or uh... – 
or give a rating and review in their podcast, you know, somehow Good bring point. value to, to their cause and, you know, uh, get on their radar. Yeah. So, you, but you got to remember your long-term goal. Yeah. This is, this is, this is a long-term goal. It's something that's not going to happen overnight. It won't happen fast, but with, persistence and with good um, will towards that other person, it can happen. And that's why I think it was when you said earlier, begin as soon as you can. This kind of drove it home. It's a long-term goal. So the earlier you begin, the better it is Mm -hmm. for you. You know what they say? What was, what's the best uh, time to uh, plant a tree 15 years ago? What's the second right. best time today? So, yeah, it's, you know, that's just the, the nature of it. You know, get started. Now, um, if our listeners would like the chance to uh, get to know us and, you know, if we've influenced you in some way, there is an opportunity coming up for you uh, to do so. Uh, Kingsley and I are going to be at the Podcast Movement Conference in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania uh, this uh, year, 2018, in case this goes out years from now and you're listening to this. We won't be there 2019 uh, (laughs) in Philadelphia. But uh, on Wednesday, July 25th, uh, we are going to have a, uh, a meetup in the lobby of the uh, conference hotel. And we're going to put all the, the information inside of the show notes here with a link in Eventbrite. So if you'd like to meet with us and uh, get to know us, that would be a great opportunity for you. If you're going to be in the Philadelphia area. And I would love to love to really, um, actually we would really love to just sit down and hear your story and just hear the journey you're on. Mm-hmm. And, and who knows, we may be able to give you a shout out in a future episode. So just connect with us and um, let's just see where that takes us. I mean, I, we're, 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 trust me, we don't bite. So you don't have to worry about coming <laughs> and inter- interrupting. We want to give you time to you. So if you see us someplace, p- please just say, hey, man, you know, I'm here. I up on we heard your show and. Mm-hmm. Trust me, we will take a break from whatever we are doing to say hi and to make sure we connect with you. So yeah. please do that. Yeah, we both love to be exciting uh, new podcasters, and uh, it would be our pleasure to uh, meet with you. So again, we're going to be doing this at the Podcast Moving Conference in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on July 25th. So uh, check out the show notes at podcastbyfriday.com slash 49. 49. Yes. Mm-hmm. See you in Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, July 25th. Make mm-hmm. sure we, we connect. And um, we want to hear your story. And again, if you want to reach out to us before that, you can always email us at podcast at podcastbyfriday.com. Mm-hmm. And you can also check out the Facebook group at. Uh, Facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday. And, uh, you know, reach out to us there. There's going to be information also listed in the group uh, about this event. So See fantastic. ya. All right. Fantastic. Kingsley, I've really enjoyed uh, this episode with you talking um, about influence and how to um, use the power of influence to grow your podcast. Yeah, I really enjoyed it myself, Bill. I, re- I really when it first started off, started off by you know the show. I said, "Oh man, will we have enough to cover in this show?" And I'm thinking, here we've got almost like 40 minutes, <laughs> and it's really, really a great. Uh, I, I love it. I enjoyed it because I think it's going to help our our listener realize the power of of influence and how they can connect with the influencers, mm-hmm. and they, they might themselves might be an influencer, but the bottom line is grow their audience. And that's what we we want to help you to do is grow your audience. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. We're going to wrap this episode up. This has been uh, um, a great time. And I hope you that you'll listen in to our next episode of Podcast by Friday. I'm Bill Griggs. And I'm Kingsley Grant. And we'll see you then.
podcast by Friday. Take bold action to create your minimal viable podcast today. Check out new episodes at podcastbyfriday.com or on iTunes or Spreaker.